All right, well, good morning and welcome today. Hopefully we are having a good start to this uh, wonderful Wednesday. Um, we will uh, continue with our study of the Second World War and take a look at the human impact uh, that this uh, war will have. Before we start, um, just a few things to uh, think about is that uh, registration is going on. And so the message is out there that uh, uh, you should be engaging in uh, registration for your senior year. And that um, if you have any questions or concerns, you wanna always make sure that you reach out and, and ask uh, those questions. So I will open the floor if uh, anyone has any um, questions or concerns regards to registration. You uh, unmute or put into the chat. And you can always stay on afterwards uh, when we get done with uh, uh, the Google the Google Meet or, or what I have to cover. Um, you can always stay on and we can um, answer any questions at that point as well. All right. So um, we have been looking at the, the human impact. And so each day I have been taking a little bit of time to kind of highlight some aspect of it. And today I want to focus on um, African-Americans, uh, highlight a few things, take a look at African-Americans in the armed forces and uh, then build on that. So uh, I have a video clip that I want to uh, share with you it's about four or five minutes then we can think about some takeaways and I can bring in some other issues kind of related to this as well as, um, you know, uh, how this can uh, expand to include other, other groups as well. So with that, uh, let me get my video clip going. training camp of its kind in the world, 800 colored rookies get their basic physical build-up for eventful days to come. Ten weeks ago, they were coal miners, steel workers, mechanics, professional boxers. In fact, most everything from college teachers to Pullman porters. A few weeks more of this intensive drill, and they'll become the field artillery replacements of the famed 16th Battalion, a compact fighting force of cannoneers, radio and signalmen, an all-Negro group assembled from all over the nation, a well-trained unit ready and eager to join the fight for survival of the great democracy that gave them birth. All right, men. On behalf of the United States Army, the reception center here at this camp, we're glad to welcome you here today and into the United States Army. We're glad to see all of your happy, smiling faces. You'll be converted from a civilian into a full-fledged soldier. When I went in, they uh, had a pad and eyes Negro hair, Negro, color, Negro, complexion, Negro, race, Negro. Everything was Negro except height and weight. <laughs> Despite the bravery of African-Americans in all of America's previous wars, 
despite the argument made by the NAACP and others that a Jim Crow army cannot fight for a free world. The armed forces of the United States remained strictly segregated. Black draftees from the North, sent to training camps in the Deep South, encountered Jim Crow laws for the first time. Some who defied those laws paid with their lives. Some men refused to serve in a segregated military and were imprisoned for it. At home and overseas, there were frequent and sometimes bloody confrontations between black servicemen and white civilians, black troops and white ones, over women and local customs and equal access to military facilities. Growing protest by African Americans would force the military to make a few changes. An Army Air Corps training camp was set up at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. A single ship, the USS Mason, was manned entirely by blacks, except for her commander. The 761st Tank Battalion would eventually fight in Europe, sent to the front by George Patton with the admonition, I don't care what color you are, so long as you go up there and kill those Kraut sons of bitches. The Marine Corps had refused to accept any blacks at all, but after 1942, as casualties in the Pacific mounted and pressure from civil rights groups intensified, John Gray and others were finally allowed to sign on and serve in segregated units. They uh, did not intend to have blacks as fighting units. They intended to have them, if, if at all, as support units. Look like you ought to appreciate the fact that you're not up front. But they didn't want you to get that kind of glory. So again, as I always uh, ask after I share a little video clip, um, any initial uh, reactions to uh, that clip or any thoughts that might come to your mind? Um, feel free to uh, unmute and, and share that at this point. So what, what you see in that, in that, in that particular clip is um, uh, there are a lot of uh, what we call uh, historical nuggets with that little clip. Um, one, on one hand, there is active recruitment uh, for getting uh, African Americans to participate in this conflict, but then you also see uh, the issues of race uh, find its way into the armed forces as well. Um, and that may not always be the case for other uh, uh, minority groups, uh, but in this case for our African Americans, uh, race does come into play here. Uh, some of the training centers, as brought up in the video, uh, were in uh, southern states, and so uh, Jim Crow laws uh, can uh, provide an obstacle uh, for uh, African Americans who are coming uh, from other parts of the United States, as well as those who are from the South as well, uh, creating that segregation. But inside the armed forces, uh, still continue with segregated troops. Uh, it's not until the Korean conflict do we actually begin to have integrated troops. All right, so it's 1950 uh, with that. And as also brought up in the video clip, uh, the, the, the general notion that uh, they're going to be used for support and not for combat. And so even though there might have been like a, uh, close to half a million that do enlist uh, or get drafted into the armed forces, uh, less than 100,000 of them are actually going to see combat. Uh, so that uh, is an issue that still needs to, to be addressed. 
when we look at uh, the the American armed forces in general, you know, if we if if we could come up with a, a kind of like a profile, so if if um, uh, move away a little bit uh, from the topic at hand in regards to African Americans in the armed forces. I mean, if we look at uh, the armed forces in general, it does seem to be reflective of American society. Uh, you can find uh, indigenous people in the armed forces, you can find women, you can find Latinx, you can find um, uh, Asian Americans, you can find African Americans, but then how they're being used uh, what kind of support roles and all that stuff. That's where, you know, it gets very, very interesting. You know, that's a very good point that's brought up in, um, in the chat. And, you know, it does seem to kind of, uh, defy logic. You're involved in a, a conflict and you would think, uh, any able body that will be willing to fight, you would uh, you would accept and just bring in. Um, and again, you know, if we think about uh, you know what is going through uh, the rationale or through it, through uh, the systems that that exist, um, you know, uh, when you look at uh, discrimination or if you look at where uh, some are advocating perhaps uh, racial differences and advocating racial differences and they're using a criteria, um, we know that the criteria really isn't, there isn't a real basis uh, uh, to that criteria. Uh, there's nothing really solid that that criteria really holds on. And so there are other, other things that come into play as well. Uh, you know, I think in that video clip, uh, the guy had mentioned they don't want that glory to be shared. Uh, you got some of that. Uh, in that war town where um, people were driving around uh, in, or when African Americans were uh, getting some money and driving around in cars and having houses and stuff, there was a sense of, of jealousy of success. I mean, all that stuff comes, comes into play here. Uh, and uh, it does, it does get you to think um, what the heck is going on, perhaps. So, I, I mean, I totally get it. The contradictions are, are there. And uh, throughout these, uh, when we look at the next conflict, the Korean War conflict, and with the integration of the troops, I mean, that creates uh, some difficulties as well. Because uh, you do have some that uh, have a certain set, uh, set way, and then uh, that is being confronted uh, at that moment in time. So um, to go back, though, uh, when, you, when you look at uh, the, the, the slide of our agenda, I have democracy and double victory at home and abroad. Uh, civil rights groups... Uh, will advocate during this conflict. And some of you probably have found out as you look through the human experience is uh, looking at uh, not only defeating fascism, totalitarianism abroad, but then also uh, at home, uh, taking a look at the issues. Uh, we can, when, when you look at the layers of of segregation or layers of discrimination. I mean, you, the, it you got to look at the different aspects that it it is in in society. All right, so um, this is a heavy duty topic and uh, one that we need to to address at times. And so uh, you can look at state, you can look at local, you can look at national gov uh, levels, and you can see the layers and. It's they're going to need to be peeled back and that's going to take time. And we will definitely look at that when we get to the, uh, the civil rights movement. Um, so uh, uh, with that, uh, with that, um, hopefully, you know, this clip does bring on a, a little cause you to think a little bit more. Uh, 
And so uh, with that, tomorrow uh, I want to bring in uh, and look at uh, uh, the role of women in, in this conflict and uh, see if we can, we can get a little discussion based on that as well. So I appreciate uh, the, the comment in the chat. Uh, and I've, I encourage you to add more to the chat as well, or just unmute and add uh, to the conversation here as well. So uh, with that, you know, you should be working on uh, this uh, human impact of war. And uh, you, this is a summative piece, so hopefully you haven't put it off until, you know, until now. Hopefully you've been working on it with your historical buddy or solo. Uh, is there any questions related to this assignment? Anything that's confusing? Okay. So uh, if questions do, do come up, feel free to send me a message uh, or email me, or you can always stay on this Google Meet as well. Uh, just as a reminder again, you know, next week is the end of this tech semester, and so you wanna make sure that you take care of your, uh, any missing assignments that you might have. All right? Okay, uh, so with that, um, it's a short day. And so if you don't have any questions or concerns, you are allowed to exit and have a wonderful day.